Hello! Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic journey. And today we'll be working with colored pencils. So you'll need your number two or HB pencil, a kneaded eraser, and some good quality colored pencils. Thank you for being here today. I really enjoy drawing with you. Sometimes it's your first experience, sometimes you've done this before. Either way, it's, it's good practice. So today we're going to be drawing with color. You've got your colors, your number two pencil, and your kneaded eraser. First thing we're going to do is sketch in, with simple shapes, our object. And we're doing the parrot. So let's start out with the parrot's body. And you, you kind of can look through there and say, well, I want his head to be right up in here somewhere. I want it to be that, that tall right up towards the top and then you can say well if his body you know is going to be about right in here and then there's his little feet kind of come up through here somewhere and so you just kind of it's almost like a stick figure and then you just kind of say well here's his head it's going to be about that big and you just start adjusting Okay, just keep adjusting, just keep adjusting. There's his beak, kind of comes down there. Maybe not that far over, about right in there. Just simple shapes and use the side of your pencil like I've taught you. It's a lot faster if you draw with your elbow and your shoulder. Remember that everything, this is kind of like ink, everything gets erased that's in here. Because we can't, can't use the graphite with the colored pencils. You've got to get rid of the graphite. Otherwise, the graphite mixes with your colored pencils and turns them muddy. You've all experienced that before, I'm sure. His eye's got to be up in there somewhere. So just keep drawing. Get as much information in there as you can. A lot of this, we're going to draw with our colored pencils. So you just need this, the basic structure, the basic composition. You don't need all the details in here. It's basically where things go. Use simple shapes, even his little feet. Just simple shapes. These little kind of hot doggy looking things. Here's I'm delineating where the, the wing goes, but I really don't care about the individual feathers. I could maybe say, well, the red ones kind of go over here. And for me, that's about it. Really don't need too much more. If there are some confusing lines to you, now's the time to get rid of them. But like I say, all of this we're going to get rid of. So there's... No pressure for it to be exact. But you do want to be as close as you can. So when we're ready for this, then we kind of delve into color. Now you don't, you kind of want to avoid black. Uh, black as a whole, black is, is very, very dark. There are some areas that we might need some black, a little bit in his eye, a little bit in his beak, especially that bottom part of his beak and the tip. Maybe a little tiny bit in his his uh, feathers and his foliage around there. Maybe a little bit in there, but for the most part, I kind of avoid black. And so, let's start out with a dark color. Since black is all the colors mixed together, what is our darkest color? Yeah, probably purple. Um, sometimes indigo blue, if you've got an indigo blue in your set. Most sets don't have indigo blue. But I'm going to start with purple, just because purple can go either way. You can add blues to your purple, or you can add reds to your purple. It can go kind of either way. So I'm just going to grab my purple. In the Crayola set, it's called violet. And then in parentheses, it says purple. I'm going to do all my preliminary sketching with the violet. And one of the reasons I really hit ink very hard 
is because now when we sketch, we have to think ink. There's lots of edges that we want to leave out. Even though you can see the edge of his, of his beak here, it's not real dark. So let's just leave it out. Or some of the edges of his, um, of his head over here, or her head, just leave it out. If it's really light, leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start, and I can start left to right. That's kind of the way I start. I'm just going to start up here with the tip of his beak. And I'm going to shade that little bit of dark that's in there just a little bit. And again, you kind of treat it like ink. Little dots and dashes, you don't need a lot. We start out kind of light and work our way down. There's a little bit of value down the side of his head and around his eye. And maybe I'm just going to do just a little edge here for his eye. So there's a little bit around his eye. His eye is not extremely round because we're kind of at an angle, so it's elliptical. little bit of value under his eye. And then it kind of goes into this texture that's in there. I want to kind of maybe leave out some of that, but just, just sketch it in very lightly with your, your purple, ever so lightly. Well, where that beak is is really very dark, so maybe Maybe I want to just add a little bit of darkness to that area there. Where it's fairly dark. Sketch that whole section in. A little, little bit of dark up there in the top. Maybe a little bit on that tip. You kind of got to go down and go, okay, that tip's going to be about right in there somewhere. Maybe a little edge, but I, I don't mind getting rid of that edge. I mean, if I got rid of my graphite, Notice that when you when I do this, my colored pencil stays there. Colored pencil is a lot more difficult to erase than graphite is. And so I can come in with my needed eraser and get rid of all that graphite. And what I'm left with is just my purple pencil. Yeah, you get a little bit of purple off on your needed eraser, just a little bit. But it's not a big deal. This way we get rid of all that graphite, because that graphite is going to plague us if we don't. So, I don't know, in the back of your mind, kind of think ink. I just got to get my darkest areas in. But you're also thinking pencil, because I can add some pressure to it, I can make it go darker, I can make it go lighter. And that purple, we're going to cover that with some red anyway, and the red's going to mix with the purple. It's going to be just fine. If I want to, I can just do just a couple little dots and dashes just to define that edge of his, of his head so that when I finally get rid of that pencil, I still have the edge of his head defined, just really lightly. You also have, in your kit, you also have that um, click eraser, it's kind of green, looks like this. Um, this is where you use it, is with your colored pencil, because this eraser is a little more aggressive than your kneaded eraser is. So your kneaded eraser will take out all that light graphite, 
But if you want to take out some colored pencil, you're going to need this, this uh, vinyl eraser. And I, I like this vinyl eraser because it is a little more aggressive, but um, it's still very controllable. So just keep going through there and doing all of that, that ferret, trying to get as much information with that purple pencil as you can. And just like everything else that we've ever drawn together, if you want to go fast, use the side of your pencil. So when we were talking about value and color, you know, color, color has value. So when you're drawing with color, I'm not thinking so much color. I mean, that's, that's part of it, but I think I'm, I'm more concentrating on the values lightness and darkness because even if I got my colors off it'd still be okay if my values are correct even in some of that uh, that yellow there might be a little bit of purple especially on the edges so we're gonna just go ahead and do that Not worry about it. That that will cover. It'll be there. Not worried about edges. Don't draw lines around everything. Hopefully by now you're starting to grasp that concept. One of the bad habits we've developed is drawing lines around everything. And nothing I'm drawing here is exactly perfect. And there's he's got a little chain around his, his leg there. That's that little bit of light you see right there is his shackle and uh, I'm going to take that out I'm going to leave it away I think he needs to be free so I'm, I'm just not going to worry about it even the wood of the branch that he's sitting on you can do that with purple the purple once you start adding other colors to it it won't look as purple that's the lovely thing about purple, it can go either way. So you kind of treat that purple kind of like your normal pencil. Light and dark, and we've got this kind of ghosty image. We're going to keep adding to it, layering in colors. Just need enough on there right now so I can get rid of my graphite. Get rid of that graphite as fast as you can. So you guys know that your kneaded erasers are cleaned by kneading them like this. That's why they're called kneaded erasers. Just clean them out like that. And I'm just going over the entire drawing, getting rid of any graphite that might be on there. Now as I layer in my colors, they're going to be nice and vibrant and beautiful. Now one thing that you look at his beak and you think, oh that beak is kind of tan. But if you were to put that tan in there, it probably wouldn't look quite quite right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take my purple and I'm just going to go over his beak very lightly with my purple. And then over the top of that, I'm going to add something that is a little yellow. What's going to happen, knowing what you know about the color wheel and what we did with it, what's going to happen to the yellow over the purple? Yellow and purple are complementary colors. What happens when you mix complementary colors? If you mix red and green, what do you get? What if you mix blue and orange? 
you get brown, right? It cancels it out. So if we were to take some yellow and put over the top of that purple, then it's going to cancel it out. So that's what I want to do. I'm going to take a nice golden yellow. I'm going to take that and put it over the top of that purple. It'll still look kind of yellow, but the purple is canceling it out. And if you wanted to cancel it out a little bit more, you'd put a little purple over on top of that. Because the last color you layer in there is the more dominant color. Because it's on top and it's the thing that's reflecting more light. Now, I didn't go over the entire thing. There's some of that, that beak that's right there close to the edge that's kind of more lighter. Uh, you, you, you could call it white, but it's in the shadow, and so it's going to be a cool color. Anything in shadows is going to be a cool color from the white. So even the white of his face there, in the shadows there, you're going to see some blues and purples. So that's what we're going to do, some blues and purples in there. Before we do, though, I'm going to take the red. I'm just going to put a little coat of red everywhere that I can see the red. There is some lighter area right over here you may want to take some yellow just to throw in there and say well I don't want to go too far into that so I can take some yellow and just throw that in there you put a little bit of yellow in his eye just a little bit that'll warm that up a little bit a little yellow maybe down in here just just a little bit and it doesn't have to be extremely smooth because his feathers are not extremely smooth. There's little darks and lights that go in there. And I could take maybe some of that, put it down in, in here where that yellow is. Might have to cover up some of that. And don't worry if you go into the purple a little bit. That's okay. It'll turn that kind of gray you look at the tips of his feathers they're there anyway the more color you add the better so for my yellow that's probably about it and then I'm going to throw in the red and there's two different reds you've got this kind of fire engine red and then you have a, a kind of a warm red and orangey red I'm going to pull both of those because I can see more of the fire engine red around the, the top of his his head there and on his chest is more of the fire engine red. And you've got that orangey yellowy red that's in the back. So I'm gonna start with the fire engine red, just the red red. And that's gonna go over his top of his head right there. And I'm not pressing real hard right now. As I layer in colors, I have to press a little bit harder and harder. So eventually, I'll be pressing. People always say, well, how do you get your color so smooth? This is it. This is how you do it. You start out layering it. And the more you layer into it, the smoother it's going to get because they're going to kind of smooth each other out. So I'm not... I'm not going too hard right now you can just put a little bit here and there where that orangey yellow is we'll come back into it with this other red Don't be afraid to leave a little out. You can always come back in and put it in. So if you think to yourself, eh, it's not that dark or it's not that much, just leave it out. You can always come back in later. I'm not trying to be very exact either because all that those feathers kind of start blending together. All those colors will blend together. 
Now I'm going to switch over to this orangey red. Go back over some of that. It'll look much warmer. It's amazing how a little bit of yellow will just warm things over. The other thing I do, I don't know if, if you guys do this, but in my offhand, I'll, I'll have my kneaded eraser and, and these other pencils so that they're easy access. I can just pull them out whenever I want them. You don't have to do that, but I find it's easier for me. I also like to use the side of my pencil quite as much as I can, just because that's going to sharpen that for you. So then you're going to have a sharper point when you do finally get into doing detail. So drawing is kind of like a camera. You go focus, focus, focus. You start out very simple, simple shapes. You just keep moving in, moving in, moving in, and detailing it. Finally, at the very end, it can be very, very photographic. So at this point, everything seems to be okay. If, if it wasn't, I, I could erase it, I could change it, I can move it, I can alter it a little bit. I can see a few things that I need to do, but I think I can do those with my, with my other pencils as I draw along. I'm going to pull out the black right now, um, just because your black, I don't want my black to be the last color I put on there. It makes it kind of muddy. So I'm going to just go ahead and go into some of these little areas that are very dark with my black. And I'm adding a little bit of pressure because it is dark. But as I go, I'm kind of mm, altering my, my shapes just a little bit. And I will do some other colors on top of that, like blue, maybe some more purple. That black is going to give us our contrast. Contrast is a principle of art. And the contrast helps things to have variety, uh, helps them to have emphasis. Creates interest. So I want that contrast in there, that black, black. And I might have a little bit in his eye here and there too. The little pupil is very dark. I'll make that pop. That, that really makes that eye kind of come through and pop a little bit. Don't necessarily want to put it everywhere, but here and there. And as we put other colors on top of that, it'll mix with the black. We'll get our shades of those colors. But the important part is the contrast really need that contrast. There's little spots here and there on his feathers. So there might be a little bit here and there. This is where it's really dark. I'm using that feathered line that I taught you as well because It gives it that nice, soft, fluffy kind of a look. So it's just a little flick back and forth. And you remember, you kind of flip it up, and that'll give you that nice little feathered line. And just remember, what's most important here is not color, it's value.
again, you can treat this very much like ink in that you're using little dots and dashes, little feathered lines. This is why I had you practice three drawings with ink. And once you've drawn with ink, you'll never draw the same. And it's good to keep practicing with ink. That that should that should be part of your your repertoire of things that you practice. One of the other colors that we've got to use is that blue because he's got some nice blue in there. So just pick out your prettiest blue. Um, I, I really like this sky blue. It is quite pretty. And even though it's not as dark as we need it, I'm going to just go ahead and put some of that down in there. It'll be over the top of the purple. We'll put some more blue over the top of that. If you run into the yellow a little bit, you're going to get some greens. And that's okay. You see a little bit of that in his feathers anyway. I'm just going to hit that with this sky blue. There's quite a bit of blue all over this. Even in the in his legs, there's some blue or his feet. I'm just going to put some blue in there. There's blue in the log. Look at some of those little areas of the log. There's blue in there. And again, we're going to really put a lot of color into this, and so it may not look blue when we're done. Quite a bit of blue up in his, his head, right up in here in his beak. Uh, even around his eye, there's quite a bit of blue. So I'm going to, because his head is so important, it is our, our focal point. I'm going to zoom into his head there. And uh, with the blue, I'm just going to come in and over the top of that yellow, it'll turn slightly green, but then there's some purple in there too. So I can do a little bit of blue over that. That'll help shade a little bit of that. Some of these little areas right next, especially right over that black. Let me do a little bit of this light blue. Just here and there, little areas that... And it doesn't, you don't have to go everywhere, just here and there. See how that, that just kind of changes that whole kind of feeling of that beak. You can add a little bit of pressure if you want it a little darker. Less pressure for lighter. This blue is really going to be important. Right there under his eye where that texture is. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do these little kind of U shapes and zigzaggy shapes to get some of those little textures in the eye. Now there's a little bit of purple, there's a little bit of black. Now there's a little bit of blue. I still have that yellow over there. Some of that touched my blue and I get this kind of a green color. And that's okay. I'm just using some little little kind of swirl kinds of things or little zigzaggy things to get those little wrinkles around the eye. It's okay if I can leave some of that out because you get light touching that.
Now I used to really hate coloring. My my teachers, especially in grade school, would say, "Ah, you have to color this," and I'd go, "Oh, because I'd I'd color on top of my drawing part, and first of all, it would turn muddy, and that bothered me. And secondly, I really didn't understand color. Didn't." Understand what you could do with it. Didn't understand that there was value to color. That you can make things dark and light. So here I'm just using little sections to create some some texture. And then you just do little kind of dots and dashes. Just a little little texture that goes down in there. Here's some little U shapes. This works for snakes, fish, dragons, you know, whatever you want to have scales. This is a great way to do scales. We'll come back into this with a little purple, maybe some darker blue. Any place there's light, just leave it white. And I always come back in and add color. I'm just doing these little, they're, they're like little U shapes. I'm leaving out the tops. And that's going to give you that texture. Oh, isn't that nice? Now we're going to come back over that with some purple or blue. So I'm going to go back over the black with this purple. It's going to look darker, but it's not going to look black. It's going to be a little prettier, especially on the edges. Over the top of that yellow, it's going to dull it out a little bit more. Over the top of the blue, it's going to go a little blue-violet. Just all those colors, all of a sudden, are just going to make kind of a kaleidoscope of, of beauty. And I'm really doing some pressure on this purple to blend all those colors we've laid in there. We've got blue, we've got purple, we've got black, we've got some more purple. And that's just going to blend it more together. Make your contrast a little higher. And if you had a better colored pencil, a little higher end colored pencil, like Prismacolors, for example, this would even have more contrast. You ever drawn with Prismacolors? Yeah. Yeah, they're nice pencils. Yeah, nice pencils. But you can do good art with with cheap stuff. You can do good art with crayons. So I'm just really adding some pressure to this. And that very edge, there's a little reflected light on that very edge. So I'm just going to come in just with purple. Kind of extend that out just a little bit. So you have just a little lighter edge right there. I'm going to go back into this with some purple, and I, I don't want it everywhere, just here and there. And just little, those little U shapes, I'm just going to darken them in just a little bit, just to help those little edges. So look at your scrap and you say, well, it looks kind of dark right in here. Put a little bit there. Some of those little edges, little spots here and there. I'm going to do some more purple there in the red because it's a little darker right in there. Add a little bit of pressure to it if you need to.
just adding a little bit of purple under some of those little shapes that I did just to enhance them a little bit. That blues and the purples working together there really very nice and then you have that light the white that's that's there if you think to yourself oh eh, maybe that's too much you can take your eraser and go back into it you can lighten it up a little bit if you want to it's almost done really we need some more of that red so I'm just gonna this is that uh, orangey red because I want it really warm you just could put some of that orangey red over there little bit of pressure on it last but not least some of that fire engine red to go back into that really dark area right over my purple might need to do some more purple over that but as I layer in those colors Maybe put some of that in there. And you can go, I mean, the cool thing about this is it, you don't have to be exact. You can like go back over the red, go over some of the yellow. All those colors will mix together. Wherever you see shadows in the feathers, just do them a little bit bluer. Some of those little yellow feathers have little blue tips on them. I'm just going to throw those in. I'm just adding some pressure to that red. And again, don't be afraid to leave some out. You can always come back in later, put it in. Cool thing is, is when you get away from the head, all this stuff in here is just kind of fluff. Uh, you know, and, and you can just kind of scribble it in. Don't be afraid to go over some of those little areas of other colors. It's all layering it. You just layer it in. Sometimes it's that spontaneousness that makes it fresh. And don't be afraid to be a little spontaneous. If you feel like it, go ahead and draw it in. And it's just kind of a dance between colors. You just kind of figure out what you want to use in there. If you want to warm it up, if you think to yourself, oh, golly, it's like right here in the wing. It's a little more orange. You could use orange. But I've already got the red in there. And if I put yellow down in there, It'll mix with that, make it a little brighter. Maybe you want that brightness in there. I'm just kind of scribbling that in, just, just to allow that yellow to get in there. Now I'm just going back into those really dark areas with my purple. It'll darken in that red. Kind of goes red-violet. 
If you use black in there to darken it up, it probably would look kind of muddy. So the purple works out best. Remember, we're creating art here. It's not a photograph. It doesn't have to exactly match those colors. In fact, it's better if it doesn't. Better if they're brighter and more vibrant. You don't need it everywhere. Just here and there. Wherever you think, oh, it needs a little darkness in there. Beautiful, beautiful color. That blue and that purple. That fire engine red, just over the top of all that, it's going to blend all those colors. The purples, the blues, the blacks, the orange, and yellow. And again, don't be afraid to leave a little out. You can say, well, I can still see that yellow there. I want that yellow to be there. Add some pressure to it. That'll put all those blending things together. Smooth it out. Make your colors more vibrant. This is what we call controlled scribbling. You just kind of scribble here and there, controlling where you scribble. This is just plain old blue. And his, so the, we added a little bit of black over there, we added some purple. And this blue now is just going to kind of blend some of that. And, and just like we did in the feathers, you don't have to go everywhere. Just wherever you think you need to. There's quite a bit of texture in there. It's hard to see. So sometimes you just got to do what you think you see. And let that stuff take care of itself. More blue in there, just just to really enhance that. Cobalt kind of blue that's in there. It's also okay towards the end there, if you really get sketchy and even just let it fade out into nothing. That's okay too. Kind of is one way to end things without ending it. It's kind of like telling the viewer, well, there's more to it down here than there than I've drawn. And they can imagine it's there. But you don't have to actually draw it in. Last but not least, you want to do that little piece of wood, but you don't spend a whole lot of time on it. Nobody's looking at the piece of wood. You just want enough there to say it's textured, it's wood. You need something to be on. Remember, we don't want floating objects. Even though birds fly, they don't levitate. So blues and purples in the wood. You can even put in a little bit of mahogany. It's kind of a reddish brown color. You could put a little bit of that in there if you wanted to. 
I think I will just a little bit. Give it some contrast, some this is that mahogany, kind of a red brown. It'll it'll mix with that blues and purples. It'll be just fine. You don't need it everywhere though. Last but not least, you want to sign it. And so sign it up just a little bit. Uh, you could even sign it right up in here. This would be a good place to sign it. It doesn't have to have a really elaborate signature. That signature is your copyright. You need that up in there somewhere. Thanks for joining me on this little artistic journey today. Remember, art makes life better.